Coming up on today's Codebed Daily, Alex gets into it with some seagulls, but we also break down some player props, some game picks, some best bets. There's a rate my multi. I'm covering an NFL player that I love for Offensive Player of the Year. We've got some MLB stuff, some FIBA World Cup. Alex, outside of punching on with animals, what are you looking at? Uh, stats guy taking way too long to get a joke and why a goose will mess you up. Uh, that checks out. Uh, I'm not sure what the betting angle is there. Yeah. But stats guy, what about you? I've got a few betting angles with some uh, EPL goal scorers, some cricket and a bit of NRL, a bit of everything. Uh, nice one. It is GoBet Daily. It's all in there. Check it out right now. Welcome to GoBet Daily. It is Wednesday. Hump day. August 23. Episode 179 of this here program. It is Code Bet Daily. I am your host, James Clements. I am the editor of a very good website. In a surprise twist, gentlemen, it's called Code Bet. You can find that again in a surprise twist at codebet.com.au. <laughs> Is it really I, a surprise twist? Not really. No, uh, I wouldn't have thought so. Not if you've been paying attention. <laughs> After right. 179 episodes, it isn't a surprise. <laughs> I'm joined, as always, by the punters. That's right. We've got Stats Guy here. I can't stop thinking about the Royal Rumble that's going to happen at the, uh, the AFR Brownlow this year, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Our viral video has gone... <laughs> not so viral, but yeah, somewhat viral. viral. No, somewhat viral, yeah. I'm just here for AFL punch-ons at yeah. Brownlow. That's yeah. all I, want. I, I just want to see Luke Beveridge come in and clean house now. <laughs> he's got a lot of anger issues that need to be sorted out, but he yeah, just may punch walls, everyone yeah. instead. I mean, you calling somebody else with anger issues is uh, <laughs> the pot black. Here. I haven't punched anything to, you know, break a, a bone in my uh, hand. We do have Alex Donnelly over there. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently got, got anger issues. <laughs> about to punch a wall, clearly. Uh, ah! <laughs> this is code punch-on daily. Uh, there is boxing tonight. We've got... One of the zoos and uh, Brubaker tonight. That'd yeah, we can't wait. Anyway, <laughs> Code Bet Daily. Ben Damon front and centre. <laughs> it is what it says on the tin. It's codes. It's betting. It's daily. We've got player props, game picks, best bets. Uh, I can probably knock up a rate my multi as well because hmm. uh, I've got some more FIBA gear. But that's what we're looking at today. I'm talking one more NFL player prop future, which is an interesting one because I think I've talked about him very, very, very early on in the piece. And uh, now looking at some of the specific numbers, I'm like, this is awesome. Uh, MLB, I've got a great, interesting dig into not a game pick, but a best bet Ooh. about a specific team. Is this as good as the Angels to make the playoffs? <laughs> Uh, hopefully, no, I put the complete mocker on them like I did the Angels. The Angels still going horribly. The Angels, they, have they won a game since? Basic. Well, they got postponed yesterday. So ah, they didn't that, lose. That saved us. Uh, and of course, the FIBA World Cup, which is starting on Friday, where we'll have the Boomers taking on Finland, hello, and uh, a bunch of other stuff going on there. I'm going to go through basically the rest of the Friday slate. I think I covered off. Four or is five there more of those games? games. That's a big like Friday. Eight thing. games Jeez. on Friday. It's oh. awesome. Woo. <laughs> Love a World Cup. Uh, Stats guy, what are you looking at in today's show? Uh, another EPL future a goal scorer there. Uh, some one day cricket. Just thought there were some good odds there. And an are we? We're playing at the moment, aren't we? No. No, I don't think so. Are you sure? Yeah. Maybe. I feel like I still no, it's like Australia A. Manus uh, is leading Australia A. Oh, uh, Australia A. Yeah, Australia I don't think a. you can bet on Australia A. But um, you probably a different match. You might be able to somewhere. Uh, and then an NRL Thursday night pick. Interesting. Not, Australia, right? All I want to do is go back to the uh, glorious year of oh, before Yeah. Yeah, but also they've got to wear that uh, that olive green kit. Mm. It was fantastic. Australia taking on Australia, A, eh? The two greatest nations in the world. <laughs> uh, we've got Alex over there. Yeah, having a look at a couple of EPL futures and a rugby union pick as well. Rugby union, because the World Cup starts in three weeks? There's so many A's. World Cups. Something. Yeah, there's too many World Cups <laughs> this year. World Cups. <laughs> World Cups since since, since the, uh, the, the men's soccer one last year, I reckon we've had four. Four. Yeah. And we'll also have, We've also had we'll world have championships we'll have of swimming as well. World championships. We had a T20 right World Cup last year as well. Yeah, yeah. There has literally been eight in 12 months. <laughs> I think we're I'm, just addicted to World Cups. <laughs> I'm World Cupped out. I think we should I, do there's no such world thing Cup. as World Cupped out. What are you talking about, <laughs> yeah. coward? <It's> like, <laughs> it helps us have content. That's good. Well, if the Americans can call every single thing a that they have a domestic thing a world yeah, championship, I then Americans I think the, world, the rest so of the world go, blow it out your nose. So does that world mean Bris the Brisbane Lions are going to be the world champions of the AFL? 100%. <laughs> the world champs of the AFL. Give me the fair, belt. There's no, there's no team beating them. Uh, I don't know. The Chinese you know, league. Because yeah, I, yeah, I worked for AFL Europe and I watched Oh, did you live in Europe, Stats guy? I did, yeah. Didn't know. Interesting. Nice. Let's get into some player props. It's time for player props. I like how we start off just with the tune. There's an echo in there. Right. Uh, my player prop is Christian McCaffrey. So you, if you cast your mind back, I talked about him being- That keeps viruses off my computer, right? 
Yes, the McCaffrey. <laughs> I was like, "Why?" Wow, yes. Oh gosh, that's guy got it. <laughs> he finally caught up. Oh, was guys, I got it. Guys, I just guys, like how stupid that was. Yeah. Not because of guys. Fun. I like that joke. Yeah, no, I, like, I, got yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, we Is that because that. your mum and dad made you put uh, the actual M- McAfee? Uh, the old uh, lime wire your... used to cost me. A, yeah, a bit, sure. A few, it was the lime wire, not yeah. the reams of pornography. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the reams of pornography from lime wire. That's what you're thinking about. That's whatever. Right. Any futures though so i talked about this a while back because there is the uh the strange markets that the nfl do have where they have uh their award markets right yeah where you have mvp obviously or well, that's the best player but it's like no nah, 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 but we've also got the best defensive player and the best they defensive weird, like, weird bit, ones, yeah. so they're not the most valuable it's like well they are but they're not it's like, <laughs> okay uh but defensive player of the year was one of the ones that i looked at is that for, just so we can give more people awards in the NFL, so like can, it, so yeah. it's con- essentially but because they can hit contract things ah more money i'm the best defensive player in the something east yeah, yeah. cool in the well it's obviously because the MVP is yeah. just now a quarterback. Award. Yeah, oh, so it's like the Brownlow midfielders. And sort so of, yeah. this is now where they go offensive player. They're like, oh, we'll, we'll reward one of the running backs. That'd be nice. Or the really good wide receiver and defensive player of the year is like he made. We a do a lot of work of as well, yeah. guys. Yeah. Hey. To be fair, they should have a defensive player of the year award in AFL and things like that. But Sam Taylor. Yeah. They probably should actually. They should, to be yeah. Honest. yeah, they should, and they should call it the Golden Fist. Golden Fist, exactly. Bye. Bye probably, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we anyway. got the Coleman. We need the Goldman. The True. Call it a spud. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. literally it. Yeah. Why is this not a thing, AFL? Yeah, been, look, they they Gil, about, we're doing your job for you. <laughs> All I demand is a seven-figure yearly salary from the AFL <laughs> as the junior vice president of Common Sense, <laughs> and I'll give you the spud medal each year. Winners like this, yeah. how can you not? Yeah. Sam, Sam Taylor will win it this year. Also, we'll make. Oh, it's between Sam Taylor and Jacob Wiedering. Come on, uh, Wiedering. He's, he's, up, he's up there. Yeah. Wade has been awesome. Uh, but the point, I think, to drag it back yeah. to what I was yeah, talking sorry, about. Yeah, sorry, going back to the NFL. I was thinking of better, how we could make the AFL better when we're hired. When you're high. Hired. hired. It sounded like you said hired. You fired. <laughs> <laughs> did, you just, did you just call me a liar? No, I said you're fired. Oh, that's much worse. Anyway. <laughs> Where do you uh, see yourself in, your five, in five years, Peter? Don't say this. Don't say this. Doing. <laughs> right. The entire idea behind McCaffrey. For the offensive player of the year, $17. Yep. Because this is where the value is where you go, well, they're not going to give offensive player of the year to a quarterback because that's your MVP award. Who does more on offense for a team going into this season conceivably than Christian McCaffrey? And the answer is nobody. So when you look at the actual, just the raw numbers for his rushing stuff, which is nine, the over-under is 900 and a half yards. Yep. So the over-under, that's your dollar eighty-seven with uh, Ladbrokes at the moment where they have the player sort of totals. Break it down. He had 1,139 yards last year rushing, yep. which is a lot. He got traded to San Francisco, what, a third of the way through the year, whatever. He still averaged 67 yards per game for San Francisco. It's a massive ones. He had some quiet ones. But the thing is, because he's catching passes and at times throwing them, uh, this is why he's like, I talked about this what, a couple of months ago already. The offensive player of the year thing. There's not going to be a dude if McCaffrey stays healthy that does more on offense because he's catching passes, yep. throwing them, running right? the ball. And San Francisco are going to be awesome. So the fact that I think Jamar Chase is favorite in this market, which is ridiculous. It's like wide receivers, cool. They do a lot. McCaffrey's going to do way more, and he's probably one of the best receivers in the uh, league as well. There you go. So I'm going to look. I'm also going to sit on. Um, McCaffrey for the over for that 900. Look, rug, rushing yard totals for running backs, you're not going to lose if you just go under for everybody. But I McCaffrey, mean, if, you go, if yeah. he just stays healthy, he's going to absolutely demolish his 900 one. The 1,000-yard mark is $2.75 anyway. He's going to crush that. And the over two, uh, seven and a half touchdowns, rushing touchdowns, that is, eighty-seven. McCaffrey's also the dude that San Francisco, between Debo Samuel and McCaffrey, they'll get to the goal line and go, all right, boys. But the thing is... <laughs> McCaffrey also comes into this season. San Francisco, uh, we've had the preseason, right? NFL's preseason. They've gone, well, we've got our seventh-round pick who was our uh, quarterback towards the end of last season, Brock Purdy. He was really good. We've got the number two pick from two years ago, yeah. Trey Lance. Oh, that's right, yeah. Who stinks. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, we've he's... completely gone the other way. It's literally the last pick of the draft and like the second or third overall, whatever Lance was, I think he might have been third, Point being, you've got like this big question mark at quarterback. What are they going to do? 
They're going to go, here you go, Christian McCaffrey. Take the, the ball. ball. Take the ball. Do your thing. Yeah. And he's going to go, not a problem, boss. Off he goes. <laughs> Boom. 900 yards, no problems. 1,000, no problems. And Offensive Player of the Year, thank you very much for 17 bucks. <sighs> Seven Christian bucks. McCaffrey, that Still got to awesome. set up that uh, bet friends or whatever the hell it's called <laughs> account. Like just nice. like, hi Jim, here's my money for the season. Just <laughs> I'm also going to wait because he will eventually also have passing yard markets yep. um, or receiving receiving yard markets as well. And I'll be going over. Look, McCaffrey, as long as he stays healthy, <laughs> we know that he can just Ooh, put up monster numbers. And that's what he's to do. self. Alex, your pick. Having a look at an EPL future, uh, James Ward-Prowse recently came across to West Ham from Southampton, who obviously got relegated last year. Uh, Ten or more assists for the season. He played his first game on Sunday, and he got two. Jeez. He was against Chelsea. We we literally need eight more for the season in 36 games. He played one game in the championship this year for Southampton and picked up an assist in that did he, game. Did he so play? Got, from, yeah, he played one game. Oh, I didn't even So he that. has three assists in two games so far this season, but he's obviously known as one of the best free kick takers in England or all of Europe, actually. Just, yeah. uh, he's he just behind a, Messi in terms of free kicks, yeah. Don't yeah. care. Uh, anyway, <laughs> okay. he's actually- I don't care about the Don't care about the guy that I'm ever. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't care about him being near Messi because it's like completely- just in terms of free kicks, nothing else. Nothing I was about else. to say, isn't he about to take over Beckham? Like in the in yeah. the EPL, that's more impressive than I. He got close to Messi. It's like, well, different oh, Messi's pretty good. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Messi's probably going to have another 5,000 in the yeah, next the two way he's years. Gone, like, yeah. He's kicked 27 goals in four games. <laughs> yeah, so it's just <laughs> like, yeah. So, yeah, anyway. All numbers approximate. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Probably right. <laughs> uh, but the good thing is with West Ham, having a look at them in their first two games, they're actually going to play somewhat attacking brand of football. They did mm. everything they could do to survive last season, and they did. They've sold Declan Rice, and they've turned that Declan Rice money into three really good players. They've got uh, Alvarez and another dude whose name I can't remember. He's come across from Spain, as well as James Ward-Prowse. So they look really well set up going forward, provided they don't have any injuries. Now, with the quality of uh, ball that James Ward-Prowse can play and deliver into his his forwards and strikers and such, it's just going to set him up to hit this ten plus very yeah, easily. I think that's, that's pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, he had. I think he only had like seven or eight last year, but that's because he also had seven or eight goals. And, and South their team Hampton was horrible. Sucked. Yeah, sucked. Yeah. So him from corners, from free kicks about thirty yards out, anything sort of on the side so- side of the boxes, he's just going to have a field day. And West Ham is going to be like, huh, thank you, doink. What's the price for two dollars eighty seven? Two eighty seven for ten nice. plus assists, and he's that's already got awesome. two. I don't mind this. For the, <laughs> the Sith Lord, James Ward-Prowse. Yeah, <laughs> the Sith Lord. Uh, right, there you go, Stats Guy. What's your player prop? Another EPL future. Uh, looking at Alexander Ishak, who I loved talking about last season. Alex uh, banned me from talking about him as an anytime <laughs> goal scorer yep. during our EPL show. But Seems he's had a, had a great uh, start. Uh, yeah, but see, new season, new rules. New it's season, fine. yeah. We've yeah. got one overarching rule. You can't tip early, early Ireland any time yeah. goal. Which right. is fair. And That's we have a new rule. Like Stats Guy or Marcus can't say Ange Ball. <laughs> If yeah. someone says Ange Ball, stats guy gets punched in the arm. Well, yeah. That was the punishment. No, I'll have something to say about that. But, but anyway. um, yeah, Alexander Ishak, he only started 14 games last season for the Magpies. I think he played about 20 in total. He literally came across this time last yeah, year. Yeah, this time last year. Uh, and he has still had 10 goals in those 14 starts, which is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, he's just, I think he'll start most games this year. They've played a really attacking brand uh, just right from the get-go. Uh, he scored two goals in their opening match. He didn't score against Man City, but of course, no Man one City. Scored. No one really scores against Man City. You got Callum Wilson also up front with Ishak, but Wilson's getting a bit older in his 30s now. Don't think he'll start every game. Ishak's their rising star. He's going to start every single game. Obviously got those 10 goals. I think he can easily get towards the 20 goals this year. I know that's a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot, it's but a lot. for a guy that like his three sole play, job... Three players did it last year. He's one of those players, though, that he could only have four or five touches the whole game and he'll just get a goal. I, yeah. I just think if he can get 10 goals in half the amount of games, or even a quarter of the amount of games, mm. uh, he could easily pass that 20. So 20 goals is $2.87. He's got really good passing midfield and uh, defense through Trippier, Tonali, and Gimarash. Oh, the toenail. Yeah, the toenail, <laughs> Tonali. Uh, he looks happy to be there. Before the season, he was very sad I and mean, he had to go to Newcastle. You go from Milan <laughs> yeah, yeah, to Newcastle. It's like, going, yeah, it's just <laughs> honestly, it's like, oh, this is nice. Oh, my God, this is so bleak. <laughs> just what dreary. am I doing here? Anyway, he's got so many good passes around him. I think he's going to be their main man. He's so tall that he can use the headers, but he's also got pace and he's a great finisher. So he's just the perfect attacker for this side. They're going to be a really good side, I think, in that top four, as I mentioned earlier and I before the season. I think 20 is a lot, though. So 20 is a lot, but... If you can get 10 in not many games, I reckon you can easily get that 20 at $2.87. It's just, it's just the three players got to it last year. Yeah. One was a cyborg. The other one was Harry Kane and Ivan Tony was the other. Yeah. It is so hard to get 20 I don't know. goals. I think if Ishak played the whole season, he would have got very close to that. Mm. Yeah. I'm on board with Stats Guy here. I think Ishak <laughs> the is Swedish a man. weapon. The Swedish man. I love this. Yeah. 
I love my Swedish meatballs and I don't mind sweet, uh, Ishak here for 20 plus. Well, you're coming <laughs> off a cruising 4 0 win over uh, Everton on but That's Sunday. what we do. <laughs> the villains. villains. We're always <laughs> just demolishing teams in front or of us. Ge- or getting smashed. Let's do some game picks. <laughs> It's your best match or game. I feel like this is like slower on the uptick today. <laughs> no, it's What's not. Click it. It's got like a two second delay. It actually is What's as fast happened? as how Alex is feeling during the day. That's, nice. that's how it is. Yeah, just slowly dipping. <laughs> yeah. Like right. I'm going to start slinking sideways like I did yeah, yesterday. Fact, I want to watch that actually. Yeah. yeah, just if you had like the line above his head, yeah. just where just does he end up? Yeah. He's like perpendicular. Yeah, at yeah some three point. o'clock at the end of its hour. All right, FIBA World Cup on Friday. We've got Lativia. That's right, Latvia taking yeah, on I was like, what? Lebanon. Lativia, the Lativian gangbanger is not playing. Uh, Chris Atz, Paul Zingas, the extreme Zinger meal. Uh, they are still 16 and a half That was point. a lot of words and all just, of them feel wrong. Just keep up, Alex. Uh, <laughs> 16 and a half point favourites are Lativia. I love this. Uh, Lebanon, look, they sort of stink. Latvia, <laughs> they still have very, very high quality Euro players anyway. Okay. So they're going to demolish Lebanon. 16 and a half. Look, lines like this early on are always really a bit squirrely, especially at the start of the World Cup. But As Latvia we learned in good. the Women's World Cup recently. Yep. Exactly. But Latvia are cruising, so I think they'll be fine. Mexico take on Montenegro. Now, I think Statscon, I might have mentioned Montenegro yesterday. Uh, I don't, did we? What are the sneaky weird ones? They've got, what is it, um, Marco Samanich and they've got big Nikola Vucevic. Vuc. Oh, wait, for Montenegro, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh. Uh, but Mexico are one of those just sort of not great teams that just tend to hang around in games like this. Yeah. They don't have much size. I think they'll stick with Montenegro there, so I'm going to take the plus eight and a half for Mexico. The Dominican Republic is one of my favorite ones, though, tomorrow. Oh, Friday. Ten and a half Good point chat. favorites against the Philippines. Carl Anthony Towns might have 60 in this game. <laughs> he could. Against the Philippines, he could have so – like this should be an absolute like coming out party for him. And they should smash it. So I'm going to go to the Dominican Republic to demolish your eight, the Philippines. Nice. And if you want to go with a bit of a, if you're going to keep up there, Alex, a bit of a raid my multi. Raid my multi. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go yeah. Mexico plus eight and a half over the Montenegrins, uh, which is, look, they do have like just sort of this sneaky kind of like a lot of good guard play. Uh, Montenegro should beat them, but I still think they'll just hang with them. Uh, Lad- Latvia, Latvia over Lebanon by 16 and a half. Dominican Republic to smash a rate. Philippines minus 10 and a half. That's, of course, just a rate my multi of $7.10. Love it. $7.10. Gentlemen, rate my multi. I'll give it a eight and a half or nine. Just don't mind that. The, like plus, La- the plus numbers for strong. Mexico always be weird, but yeah. I'll six. Take it. Especially nice. first game, though. I don't mind a lot of close just, games. Yeah. So I think it'll be a lot of close games, so I don't mind be, the Mexico one. I think that's the thing. Like you got to keep in mind, like Lebanon, never too much job. Philippines, really tough. Dominican Republic, not a deep team, but like way more yeah. talent. So interesting. Mm. I like that. Yeah, and cool. uh, I think so. Tomorrow we might do a uh, giant breakdown of all those Friday games as well. And then on Friday show, I'll talk about the rest of them Saturday and Sunday. Sure. Alex, uh, taking a look at the French taking on the Wallabies this weekend in just a Union World Cup warm up. We're gonna get smashed. Can we call it a friendly. Sure. I don't think it'd be very friendly. Um, <laughs> the we, French would be like, oh, <laughs> we're not so friendly. Yeah. Because these things that are called some sort of wallaby. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so the French are hosting uh, the World Cup, uh, which starts in about two and a half weeks' time. They are going to absolutely smoke us. They're one of the favourites for the World Cup. We got whipped by the All Blacks over at the MCG a few weeks ago. And then it's like, oh, but Alex, we played well against the All Blacks next week. It's like, yeah, because the All Blacks made 10 changes, guys. <laughs> they didn't care. The Bledisloe Cup was coming was home already. New, was it the New Zealand A team? Like in the, um, the cricket match? Yeah, it was probably like the Barbarians where they all play in their club socks or <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah. Um, so France minus 11 and a half at $1.90. I think they'll just steamroll us. Thing is, if you go to the website and check out the breakdown at codebet.com.au, I do think the Australians can somehow still make the semi finals. That's because our group stinks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think your, bro- your breakdown was broken down by uh, our English compatriot over here, uh, Timmy Rich. Yeah, it was like an article within an article. He basically just went. Here's all the things that I think. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, thanks, one Tim. Yeah. I've read it. It was that, yeah. very uh, long, and it was like, hey, man, I'm sorry for you or happy for you, but I ain't reading all of that. <laughs> but my favorite thing is he actually very quickly identified what we all know is that Alex hates Australia. And Tim, who <laughs> but I actually can, hates Australia, yeah. but lives here as a pom because it's substantially better than old bloody. Yeah. Uh, he was like, hang on a second, they're going to be better than Alex thinks. Don't be so down on the Australians. And I'm okay. like... The English guy's on our side. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. 
but Alex hates Australia. Yeah. I'm going to side with the Englishman. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, no, I I do think like we're definitely good enough to make a run, but we just lack just that extra little bit that the top teams such as France, uh, Ireland, and New Zealand all have. I say Fair bring enough. back George Gringan. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Larkham, what are you talking about? This guy. Yeah, I don't know. Any, I know some of them, but I don't know them very well. Tell you uh, what, 1999 to 2003 was prime wall That was not more good, yeah, yeah. I was in a train crash and then got absolutely a train crash. hammered uh, that same night. Uh, I think the Wallies were playing. Was that the Johnny West. Wilkinson field goal? I think it might have been, actually. When we lost, when we lost an extra time. But yeah, and then I ended up. train uh, crash. Yeah, what? train came off the rails Jeez. on the way to Ballarat. Rolled down the hill. The, then kind of like, oh, I'm going to go up tens and watch the rugby. <laughs> kind of how the Wallabies went. sort of went after that as well. Basically. Uh, but just, yeah, it was uh, yeah. No, not a lot trauma. Well, well, I think we're like. Uh, yeah, I know. I think we're still like, here today. I still never sit in the front front carriage of a train. Is that. Like that, really? that was the one that rolled down the hill. Yeah. I was on the second. Where was that? Where was this? Just outside of, uh, it was between Belan and Ballarat. Yeah, no. Nice. I've caught that tra- I caught that train recently. <laughs> we only went up the rails twice. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. But anyway, but that was the same. Yeah, the <laughs> 03 <clears throat> Rugby World Cup. And yeah, it was cool. uh, a bit of chaos, a bit of fun. Nice. And then uh, had a big party that night because I was alive. <laughs> <laughs> off the rails, too off the Pretty rails. Pretty good. Nice. Went absolutely off the rails. <laughs> uh, stats guy. So like uh, one day international cricket, everyone here is talking about it. Afghanistan versus Pakistan. <laughs> 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 what, what are you present here? Hey, hey. <laughs> Two great uh, cricketing nations here. Uh, Pakistan, uh, in the first game of this this one-day series, made 201. Then they bowled Afghanistan out for 59. Jeez. Uh, so not great. That's why I'm going to obviously lean towards Pakistan here. They've got some great one-day players in Babar Azam. Babar Azam, Mohammad Rizwan, uh, and uh, Harris Ralph, who got a five for last game. Nazim Shah, also a really good short-format uh, bowler. Uh, Afghanistan, they have really solid bowling lineup. That's why they, they bowled him out for 201, which isn't too bad. we got Rashid Khan, who's an absolute star. and But... Yeah, it's really struggle with the bat. They've lost eight of their last 11 Ooh. matches, whereas Pakistan are in great form, winning six of their last eight. Now, Pakistan are only $1.25 to win, but I'm going to have a look at the line uh, in cricket, which I did a oh, while ago. I love ago. a good line in the cricket. Uh, they won Jeez. by 142 runs last game. You can get them for uh, Pakistan minus 39 and a half runs or minus five and a half wickets. Uh, I've that's a really low line for someone that absolutely smashed uh, Afghanistan last time. So the minus five and a half wickets or minus 39 and a half runs, depending on how the game ends, is $2.20. I don't, I don't mind that one. Wasn't it <laughs> Afghanistan who came out like a few months ago and like just had like a really good they had a random good, run? They had like a good run. I had a look at their team. Game. It looks yeah. like some of their batters are either injured or not playing right. at the moment because they've got all their, their gun Or, you know, they're making cash playing in the 100 or something. To be fair, they could be playing in lots of those T20 and 100 tournaments and things yeah. like that. So sure. they're, they're, and I think their team- get angry because he hates people making money. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't care if people make money. But you you literally yelling about the Saudi league the other day. That's yeah. different. That's oil money and some dodgy people. Oh yeah, like, and like some of that. these sponsored uh, cricket tournaments aren't. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, no. Stats guy only trades in whale oil. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Saudi no, I, I, I'm going to do a podcast for the Saudi league. I'm yeah, leaving this. He's going to start a, a big cricket league in Japan off. that's yeah, funded yeah. purely by whale oil. It's going to be <laughs> only in Japan and Norway. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> How do we get back to whale on this podcast? That's what you were talking about yesterday, and then you and the Ivory Hunter were going to talk about doing something else. I'm pretty sure this check is made of ivory. I'm literally the one arguing against all this stuff, and then we've got the opposite. Anyway. That wasn't the deal, Blackheart. Yeah. Anyway, right, Pakistan are going to smash him. Right, best bets. <laughs> it's best bets. It's best bets. It's time for all the best. It wasn't the deal, Blackheart. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my, my best elephant. bet. I'm l- absolutely loving this one. It's five dollars fifty. Five dollars fifty for my beloved Seattle Mariners. Your beloved what? Well, basically my, my second favorite okay, baseball okay. team. Right, so. Behind the Red Sox, I love my Mariners, and I love this team specifically. They've turned it on the second half of the season. They're tearing it up. And their season's officially ended at 12.06 <laughs> on the 23rd of August. As soon as I tip them, it's just pack her up, boys. We've been the paper all week, and they've been winning. So. They have been demolish the, uh, I don't know, woebegone White Sox. White Sox. Yep. Uh, they are currently 4-1 up at the top of the sixth in today's game too. So as they stand, they're only two games back. <laughs> Two games at to, the top. To who? To the Texas Rangers and the uh, Houston yes. Astros in the uh, AL West. Yep. So, $5.50 to win the division. The Mariners have currently won seven on the trot. Yeah, including they Astros. Yeah. awesome. They just ripped off a uh, run of three wins over the top of the Astros. Yeah. Two games back, their next nine. After this, uh, tomorrow's game against the White, White Sox, who they've just beaten twice. Uh, well, they're on their way to beating. They play. The Wobegon Kansas City Royals, who are currently 40 and 87, oh, which is not good. Uh. They then play the Oakland Athletics, 
who are even worse in 35 and 90. Wow. They then play the Mets, who have basically packed up their season, traded a bunch of their dudes away, went, pack her up, boys, we are done. <laughs> and have then hilariously some, sub, subsequently gone like 7-3 and three in their last 10. But they are still only 59 and 67. So that's nine straight games where they could just go, all of them. Guys, are we on like a 17 game win streak? <laughs> yeah. What's happening? Um, That'd be awesome. And then they actually have another three against the Athletics again before yeah. the stretch run, right? The Athletics stink. They've packed it up. They're moving to Vegas. But this entire bet essentially comes down to a run between September 23 and October 2nd when they play seven more games against the Rangers, who are on the top of the division at the moment, yep. which bookends <laughs> three games against Houston that Seattle just smashed, right, in three straight games. And don't forget, this is a Seattle team that is 36 and 27 on the road. That is the That's s- strong. The yeah, Astros yeah. are 37 and 26. The Rangers not that great on the road. They're 30 and 29. Rangers very good at home, however. But the thing is, this Mariners team, they can win it. They yeah. can easily win this AL West. And I'm five excited because awesome, I'm man. all over it for five bucks fifty. I need to get the Because out, literally man. they could build up a lead with that nine game stretch against like absolute just minnows. They have a weird stretch where they play Cincinnati, who have been really good. Surprisingly good, but they are young and inexperienced. They have Tampa Bay, which sucks. They have a run against my beloved LA Angels. Then they have the Dodgers, but then they go to that Oakland run. And then it's Texas at Texas, who are very good at home. But then they finish off themselves at home with those two series against Houston. Working their way down the bloody Houston and Texas. And it's just and off they go. It's so the fact that those last seven games are all at home in Seattle for the division, sign me. Nice. Up five bucks fifty. Seattle Mariners to win their division. FIBA groups. I had two of them yesterday. I already picked Italy to win Group A, but now I might switch to the Dominican Republic. The two dollars fifty. Just saying. We'll see how yeah, that goes. You, you were pretty keen mm, on pretty keen on the Dominican Republic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Group E. That's the Australian Australian group. What do you think about this stats guy? Dollar fifty for Australia. Three dollars for Germany. I think we're a bit too <laughs> short. Stupid. <laughs> <Stupid. laughs> <laughs> Bruges. Uh, but Different I'd country. still back us. I think. I think yeah. we can win this. Yeah. As long as we beat Germany, that's the group. I think the odds should be slightly closer. There. My favorite though is Group H. Canada. Two dollars ten over France. Yeah. One dollar eighty. I'm taking for no Canada. Let's go. <laughs> French. We're going Canada. <laughs> we're going two dollars ten. They don't have Jam and Jamal Murray. He's out. Uh, but they still have. Heaps of weapons. This France defense, even though it's uh, anchored by Rudy Gobert, this Tafo Tower, I think Canada will run rings around them. Yeah. I think they'll win that game on Friday, and I think Canada will win side, the yeah. group because this is the thing. We've actually got <laughs> essentially the group decider happening in the first game awesome. of group play. So I'm taking Canada $2.10 to win Group H in the FIBA World Cup. I'll have a pick for all the groups by Friday. Nice. Alex. Looking at Brighton to finish in the top six this season in the EPL. Ooh, They've started the Seagulls. Yep. They what a great start. nickname. I know, right? Yeah. So, hey, what's the most what's, annoying yeah. bird? <laughs> Let's name our team after that. It's like, but also in uh, the UK, they're some of the more terrifying birds. Oh, yeah. They're, bigger, they're, they're, bigger. Size, yeah, they're four times the size they're of like this big. <laughs> when well, I'm going to peck your eyes out. No, oh, when okay, I was in, sir. Honestly, so when I was in it's, Italy it's, one time, I saw a seagull come flying yeah, in, they're so big. pecked a pigeon through the neck <laughs> and killed it instantly. Our seagulls take Psych. our chips. <laughs> yeah. our and, then, yeah. and then four or five of them just charged and literally like it was cannibalism. Yeah. I'm like, what they take a chip the of ours, like one chip. They can take a whole pizza in, Mate, over in Europe. The beak would have been <laughs> <They're> so big, <laughs> like, as lo- as big as an iPhone. It was like that is a weapon. <laughs> I am not going outside for I the love next it. day. Yeah, I feel like you should have gone for the uh, yeah. So here they can steal a chip. I mean, yeah. In Europe they can take your arm. Yeah, yeah. 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 I should have said arm. I went so pizza because you were saying Italy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. That's good. Yeah. So yeah, oh, I do like that you did do the Italy yeah, thing. Yeah, pizza. yeah. That's good. It's all about a bowl of pasta. It makes it far more weird. Or steal your bottle of wine. Garlic bread. I don't know. Hey, if anyone steals my garlic bread, I'm ready to fight. Yeah, I love garlic bread. <laughs> All I can say now is, Alex, come back here with my garlic <laughs> you bread, you bastard. <laughs> anyway. What's Alex doing? Oh, he's fighting with the seagulls again. <laughs> Jeez. And the seagulls won again. Yeah, 100% they'd win. It's yeah, the actually, war, but I the seagull what, I wouldn't, want, yeah, I wouldn't want to mess with, like, a goose, a massive goose. <laughs> 
It didn't uh, mess you up. Geese, 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 turkeys, yeah. and crows. No, I don't mess Oh, no, with ravens. Don't uh, ravens in the UK are even bigger than those seagulls. I don't They're want scary. to mess with a, a goose. Raven's scary. A goose will mess you up. <laughs> I like this. I'm not going to bring in a goose tomorrow just, <laughs> just to F with uh, Alex over here. And the odds for that are. Uh, <laughs> just Come on. $1.50 to $3. I just this idea having a goose set on the other side of the table just eyeballing Alex the entire time. <laughs> What's it does inviting? Make some bets. Do it. Yesterday we were the AFL Royal Rumble with the brown line. Now we're at the, Co- the goose daily. <laughs> <laughs> we are a bunch of gooses. Yeah, we are gooses. Aren't we? Anyway, <laughs> Brighton. Yeah, Brighton. They're actually pretty good this year. Uh, if you don't want us to go off on tangents, yeah. don't call your stupid football team the <laughs> Seagulls. I know, right? <laughs> so two wins, eight goals, only conceded two so far, or one. Uh, love how Roberto De Zerbi goes about it. Like Moises Caicedo left for Stats Guys team recently. They're like, oh, what about Moises, Roberto? He's like, I don't care. He's <laughs> left. Like, basically dead to me. Don't care. Fair enough. Yeah. And then the Brighton uh, Twitter account, their admin was like, when Kaiseido gave away the penalty, they just wrote, no refunds, sale is final. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah. Like 115 good million dance, pounds later. But yeah, so the Brighton squad, like the, the main nucleus of it is a Stupin and Matoma, Ferguson, Solly March, and a few others. You're telling me like Danny Welbeck and such. Uh, and they've got a bunch of cash to bring in more players to. They have sold so many players over the last couple of years. Oh, yeah. For like have, hundreds of millions. Yeah. I think they bought Kaisoda for four and sold him for 115. Yeah. That's good business. You know, yeah, <laughs> great business. Also, out into the, the sales of, you know, uh, Curacella, Ben White, uh, and there's a couple of others as well. The guy that they sold to Tottenham. Can't uh, remember Sanchez his name. As, yep, well, yeah. as well. So, anyway, the. If they bring in more more people, they've also got one of the best recruiting squads in Europe. I think Matoma was a $2 million buy as well. They're already settled. They're going to stay at this level all throughout the season. Uh, they've already set themselves up going two for two. They should win uh, this weekend and go three for three, which set themselves for that top six finish because there are worries about Chelsea and United already. You think, all right, Arsenal and, and City are probably locked into the top two no matter what. Liverpool, Newcastle probably. Yeah, Liverpool look a little bit shaky. Newcastle, yeah, probably in there as well. So there is plenty of spots op- open in this top six, and they're $1.95 to finish in the top six. Mm, nice. I like that, yeah. It's pretty good. Good case. I'll pay it. Cool. Let's go punch some seagulls in the head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> stats guy. I don't know if we're going to be Tell you what, <laughs> code bet daily on the road is going to be sick. Is it? <laughs> I mean, we might it's die. Just, it's like, why is, why is <laughs> Alex just, just strangling every seagull he sees? Like, <laughs> Who's driving well, the RV? <laughs> it's a homie, long story. Homie's, homie's driving the driving. RV. <laughs> It's right. stats guys on the roof filming a stat of the day. No, no, guys, some on the roof, let me down. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not until you film your stat of the day. Yeah. Uh, we'll stats guy, take it away. The uh, Penrith uh, Panthers taking on the Parramatta Eels. I don't know if we're going to yeah, have a Don't get me started on Panthers. Oh, eels. I, was waiting for I you to wouldn't say want to mess with a Panther. <laughs> Panthers obviously win this over the Eels. Like if so it was there is, yeah, but if, are they scared of water? There is a great... Uh, <laughs> True, I think between... Our winter sea in Dean's Marsh, so in the uh, Victorian countryside, yeah. there is a, as you head into Dean's Marsh down the long winding sort of hill, there is a dam on one side and it's got a little island in the middle and someone yeah. has put up like a uh, cardboard cutout of like a panther. Oh, really? Because of just so many, you know, all the Eels? rumors no. just yeah. that, uh, you know, just permeate this wide brown land of ours in Australia. There's a lot of rumors in the Oh, there's all there's a, there's a panther yeah, over there, yeah. man. It's like, yeah, all everyone's got one <laughs> and they've just put up a, and it looks awesome because every time you drop it, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I know. Right, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Panthers, Eels. Let's yeah, take, Panthers, let's Eels. Go, go. Uh, Thursday night footy in the NRL. Penrith have been amazing. It's been annoying. They haven't dropped off the top all season. They have won 13 it's of their- It's not annoying if you're a Panthers fan. It's annoying, not annoying for if you're on them. everyone else in the comp where they're just absolutely sure. dominant. They're like, yeah, man, they're like the Man City. Well, the no, of, they uh, don't cheat the salary cap. That yeah. we know of. <laughs> yes. Uh, they've won 13 of their last 14 games, and they're the number one defense in the league. They've also got a strong offense led by Stephen Crichton, who's got a try in six of his last seven games. So I'm going to pair Ooh, Penrith- Panther would win a fight between- <laughs> Pan- yeah. Pan- Panther versus Stephen Crichton would be interesting. Uh, second season in a row, yeah. Crichton's had 13 or more tries. He's been absolutely awesome. And as the season's progressed, they've just been going to him more on offense. Uh, the Eels, they've been horrible uh, the last couple of months. They've got smashed by the Storm, Broncos, and Roosters. Uh, especially that one, the Roosters, last week. Surprised to me. I know the Roosters have come into some form, but they absolutely smashed them. So I don't trust them at all. I think Panthers are going to absolutely smash them here. So Panthers 13 plus and Crichton anytime try scorer, I think, is a really good bet at $2.46. Not bad. Yeah. Eels are also now out of it as well, the finals race. So, uh, yeah, they're struggling. I, yeah, they. I think they sneakily can, but yeah, yep. the odds are yeah. against them. Yeah. Uh, Brian to ooh, comes back this week as yes. well. Yeah, they're so. they're eleventh at the moment. The Eels, they're they're in trouble given the form that the Roosters, Cowboys, Rabbits, yeah, and everyone Knights else around them. The Rabbits just... look cooked as well after yeah. the Knights smoked them on the weekend. I love the Knights. 
Oh, yeah, the nice. Knights, I can't believe that while they're gone. But anyway, the Crichton, Warriors, sneaky chance. Mm. Crichton, Panthers. Good Crichton's combo. been their go-to, so yeah. 13 plus. Yep. Surely what of all of these, a dragon would win the fight out of all of them. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Well, we like to- in the AFL, the Gold Coast Suns would win because the sun just destroys everything. <laughs> it's like, what are you going to do? You're fighting a flaming ball of gas. Yeah. 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 Cooked, the blues, right? are, what's the blues? They're just the like color. Water. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're cool. Yeah. It's like, hello, I'm sad. You get evaporated <laughs> by the suns. Or you just play the blues, like the blues music. <laughs> <laughs> and the Saints yeah. lose because they're a bunch of do-gooding jerks. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Giants are pretty epic. Yeah. E- uh, epic. Yeah, but the Bombers. Bombers. Kangaroos have those claws. I don't know. Uh, but Swans, are co- the- Swans are cool. So they're not fearful at all. So you, yeah, but you've, we're talking NRL. So you've got what, Warriors, you've got Broncos. You've got the Storm. Knights. Storm, Storm, Storm would be pretty good. Tough. Storm against Dragons. <laughs> How do you need a Storm? Storm means because it's real. <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> I mean, this guy over here is like all in <laughs> WWE. He's like, this is real to me, Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, there you go. That's it. Code Absolute Chaos Daily done for today. We'll be back on deck tomorrow to figure out which uh, animal will be. What which, about a, a raider versus a knight versus a warrior? And we'll start some fights titan. with... Uh, what else are we going to fight? It's a good fight? We're going to go fight some animals if you're Alex and, I don't know, we'll pontificate some more on some punch-ons at <laughs> award ceremonies. Uh, but that's it. We'll be back on deck tomorrow. We do have the EPL show going up later today. Uh, it'll probably be up tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, which will be good because it's match week three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chaos. Can't wait. And you can see there's already an NRL preview for Thursday Night Football up on the website already. Awesome. And there'll be plenty more going up later today and tomorrow for the AFL and NRL. So get right around all of the shows as well. We've got the EPL show today. We'll have NRL tomorrow. We'll have AFL on Friday because it's a chaos final week of the AFL regular season. But subscribe across all your podcast apps to each of those shows. Like, review, and star them all. You can also jump on NBA Australia, which uh, had its I don't know, we're back episode yesterday, which yeah. is really good. Nice. Shot here in the Cobet studio, yeah. which is weird. Gerald didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Why yeah. is there a lot of What's with the swears? <laughs> I'm like, this is what we do. <laughs> also, check out Hold All Tickets on Spotify, the Punters podcast. Yes, it is back stuff. tomorrow. Tomorrow. So the first episode of the season. Uh, so just so many shows. Going all the way through to the spring, which and will be fun. NFL. There is a very good self-trumpeters uh, list. Nice. So cool. you get votes if you self-trumpet. Also, lamby has got his top five. I think it's signs you might be an asshole, which I think could just be all me. Right? <laughs> They're basically just like signs you're Alex. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there you go. Like, review, and star them all. Chuck us a follow across all the socials Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, X, and threads. Send in any questions via the socials. Any bets you want us to write? Any multis you want us to write? Who would think- win in a fight between all the mascots in sport? Yeah. Yep. The mascot brawl. This would be good. It's going to take over the brown line. Uh, and I think that's it, though. Thank you, Stats Guy. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Cheers. And thank you for putting up with this, Gerald. <laughs> like, what is He's this just sitting there going, what am I doing here? This is, <laughs> this is not great. Anyway, thanks to me because I don't know why. Uh, what do we say, Stats Guy? Gamble responsibly. All right, mate. All your picks come in. Happy punting. We will catch you tomorrow. Go to bed daily. Out. Punch on! <laughs>